Welcome to the Alabama A&M Football Review. Highlights, features, and analysis with head coach Connell Maynard. Brought to you by Datacom Solutions, Fellowship of Faith, and Huntsville Hospital. Bulldog fans, welcome to the Alabama A&M Football Review. Good evening and welcome to the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. I'm your host, Ted Dixie. The Bulldogs had an outstanding game in Jackson, Mississippi against Jackson State University. Bulldogs overcame a 16-point deficit to win the ball game 21-16. Coach, congratulations. You Thank got you. a trophy in your hand. Yes, sir. We got the, uh, they had a classic and uh, we, uh, Akil got the MVP and I got the team trophy. So uh, it was a great win. It was also a red out for Jackson State at the W.C. Gordon Classic, but Coach, you spoil that for them. Yeah, we're trying to. You know, that's the that's the objective uh, to go on the road and uh, get that win. Uh, first road game, and I think in a couple of years, and uh, uh, first conference win this year. Uh, it's hard to go on the road. Uh, it's hard to get wins. It's even harder to go on the road and get wins. So it was a great win for the program. I'm happy for the guys and the coaches. Jackson State is always playing an interesting game against the Bulldogs. They won at normal last year, 10 to seven. You come back, coach, and having overcoming a 16 point deficit had to do wonders for your team's confidence. Yeah, you know, um, we didn't play very well in the first quarter. You know, we started started to drive off and got down there and uh, then we started getting some penalties and we started backing up and, um, you know, uh, we got a punt blocked and uh, we just we just kept shooting ourselves in the foot and we just gave them short fields and they took advantage of it. Uh, take your hats off to them for taking advantage of it and then went up 16 zip. They missed that extra point, which was huge. Um, and then our guys just kept fighting. We believed, uh, we saw that they weren't really moving the ball on us. So I told the guys, listen, they can't drive the field on our defense. We quit giving them short fields. Uh, they won't score. And we just got to quit shooting ourselves in the foot because they're really not stopping us. We're stopping ourselves. So let's just play one play at a time. We got a lot of football left and get back in the game. When we come back, we'll have a look at those first half highlights from the Bulldogs game at Jackson, Mississippi against the Tigers of Jackson State University on the Alabama A&M Football Review. Hello, I'm Pastor Troy. The game of football is a lot like the game of life. You have to tackle your problems and block your fears. I just want you to know there is victory in Jesus. I want to invite you to worship with us at one of our anointed services at our Huntsville campus or our Madison campus. At the Fellowship of Faith, Jesus is exalted and the word is explained. We love Alabama A&M. Go Bulldogs! <laughs> Darrell brings new energy to the power plant. Julian's accounting is by the numbers. There's student interns from the College of Business and Public Affairs at Alabama A&M University, where marketing class connects with the community and companies come to recruit. So while Kyle strengthens his managerial skills, he's earning a business degree and experience at Alabama A&M University. Start here, go anywhere. 98.9 WJAB FM Huntsville. 100,000 watts, 24 hours a day. Smooth jazz and cool vocals. I'm just a prisoner of love. I get misty just holding your 90.9 WJAB. From the campus of Alabama A&M University. Parker is 29 and learning to communicate again. The students teaching him earn a degree with 100% job placement, but the real reward is changing a life. At Alabama A&M, it's a university where agencies actually go to recruit compassionate students who help themselves by helping others. Service is sovereignty at Alabama A&M University. Start here, go anywhere. Yeah. Thank you for watching the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. I'm Ted Dixie. Coach, a good ball game. You come back from 16 points down. 
you win the turnover battle, they get one more than we do. And of course, you mentioned earlier the woes that your punting unit was experiencing early in the ball game. Yeah, one, um, the uh, first one I believe was, uh, we just blew it. We just blew it. We had three for three, and uh, they brought an extra guy from the outside, and instead of staying inside like we were supposed to, he went outside and that let the guy come right up the middle and block it. Um, but in the second one, he was just a little slow. He was a little slow on that, and uh, you know, that, that ground was sagging and stuff. That's not an excuse, but you know, you got to catch that ball and take that quick step and get it off, and uh, he was just a little slow, so um, we, got that, we got that figured out. Let's talk about Spencer Corey, who is number 34 in the nation in net punting average. He comes back later, Coach, and makes a play that you call. Yeah, on, on the fake, uh, I felt that uh, we needed a shot of adrenaline right there. Um, you know, we was playing so bad and uh, making a lot of mistakes, and we just needed a shot. And uh, I thought that would give it to us, and, and, and it did. Of course, you'll see the Bulldogs dressed in one of my favorite uniforms, maroon pants, white jerseys, and white helmets. Also, we could take time to mention Elvin Bethay from Jackson State University, who got inducted into the NFL Hall of Fame. Four players from Jackson State are members of the Hall of Fame. Two, he and Walter Payton got drafted at the same time. Oh, that's, that's, that's great and unbelievable. You know, it's a lot of uh, HBCU players in, in the Hall of Fame. And so um, the trend, you know, it's just they were um, trailblazers. And uh, we're just glad that they, they set the trails for us. I hear the Bulldog defense. We're getting used to seeing this coach. Lots of white helmets around the football. Yes, sir. Uh, they're they're aggressive. Uh, you know, uh, the only thing I can say is just got to tackle just a little bit better. You know, but they played a great football game. Uh, we gave them short fields in that first quarter there, and uh, Jackson was able to take advantage of it. But when they had to drive the drive the field, uh, they couldn't do it. And now we see the Bulldogs executing a drive. I have to compliment you and the offensive staff coach led by Dwayne Taylor. You always seem to call the right play at the right time. Well, I, you know, we say, we always say, you know, uh, we're going to keep it simple. We're going to play to our strength. We're not trying to re reinvent the wheel. We're going to play to our strength. We're going to try to get our guys doing stuff that they can do well and play to the defense weakness. And here the Bulldogs are driving Jordan Bentley with a handoff on the left side of kill. Is that a run pass option right there, Coach? That one wasn't, but uh, some of them are. And, of course, you make a change here. We've seen this several times this season where Akil Glass gets some stats in the punting category with a quick kick. Yeah, um, you know, they got to keep the defense out there because it's, it's in a spot where we could actually go for it. And, uh, you know, you can't just pick, take your safety and back them all the way up because then we can throw the ball right in that big old hole. So it's a catch-22 for the um, – for the defense, and it's a good play for us. We'll continue to use it. And we look at Brian Jenkins Jr. on the return, and here's our first missed punt opportunity. Yeah, the snap a little high. He jumped up there, hit his hands. Um, you know, on a better opportunity, he could have caught it, but it was a high snap, and at least he covered it up, and they didn't, you know, they didn't score on that play. But uh, what are you hoping for if that does happen, Coach? What are you hoping happens for the Bulldogs after that high snap? I was hoping he could just get it, pick it up, and punt it. You know, that's, that'd be in the, the best scenario. Um, but as long as he can cover it and don't let him scoop score and, and give us a chance to, to get a stop and hold him to at least a field goal. The Bulldogs and Jackson State trade possessions, and now here's Jackson State trying to try one deep, and they do complete the pass. Yeah, uh, we had a blown, blown coverage there. That was covered too, and the safety should have stayed back on the hash, and he squatted. So, um, you know. Here we thought we had a fumble recovery. The referee, you can see in the picture, is running with the play, but they blew it dead and had a review on that one. Yeah, they said forward progress, but, you know, they're taught on those tight plays to let it go, and then we go back and look at it on review, and, here's and a, they haven't another, been doing it. And here's the other short field that the Bulldogs give up. Two yards on this punt, and Jackson State has started from the Bulldogs' five-yard line and from the 21-yard line. They both converted a touchdown. Yeah, you know, uh, that's the one he was a little slow on, and, uh, but like I said, you got to take your hats off those guys. They scored in two plays. And then to the special team's credit coach, later in the game, they execute a punt when the Bulldogs needed to execute a punt. Oh, yeah. Uh, he especially came back, man, after getting two blocked early to really have a great punt day. He turned some balls over and had some great punts and got us changed the field position. And here is one of the athletes of the day, if you will, Trayvon Walters, 15 rushing attempts, 71 yards, and two touchdowns. And actually, I think this is the drive where he actually leads us to the end zone. But this is Jordan Bentley on it. No, this is Spencer Corey's fake punt. Yeah, that was the fake right there, and uh, we knew it was there. Uh, I was just waiting for the right opportunity to call it. 
What's it like, Coach, in your bag of tricks, and how do you sense when your team needs to have a play like that occur to get you started? Well, we just we just were shooting ourselves in the foot, and you know the defense was kind of down because they didn't gave up 16 points, but it really wasn't their fault because of the short field. So um, I just felt we needed a, we needed a spark right there, and hey, let's let's go for this fate. We look at the pocket presence of Akil Glass, who was 25 of 42 in the ball game, one interception. Yes, yeah, that's, that's a great throw right there to Glass, and, um, you know, we're just picking them apart, taking what they give us. You know, they got that safety back there at 25 yards. They don't want to give up the big play, so uh, they don't think you drive the, drive the field on them, and uh, we showed them that we could. Here are one of the two sacks on the day for the Bulldogs, one by number 44, Eli Jackson, another one by number 42, Tim White. Yeah, again, like I say, the defense balled out, you know, after those first two touchdowns. Uh, we, we didn't think they could drive the field on us and go 70, 80 yards, 90 yards, and, and, uh, and we proved it. They couldn't. And here's Walters again with a fine run. Nine different running backs, including Spencer Corey's fake punt coach, to go along with eight different receivers touching the football. Yeah, but Walters gave us a nice spark, man. You know, uh, Bentley went out there, and then uh, Walters came in and waited for his chance. We always say, don't count your reps, make your reps count. Mm. And that's what Walters did, man. He gave us a big boost. He's running so hard, he kept the defense fired up, he had offense fired up, and, and that's what you need. You need somebody to make a play, man. And Walters gets an easy step into the end zone. We thought it was like maybe a false start penalty, no one moved for a second. Yeah, they kind of were jamming in the middle there, and uh, he's popped it out and uh, walked in there. And of course, now the Bulldogs, the first score on the way back to overcoming that deficit at the half at 16-7, to Coach. Right now, what are you thinking about as you go into the locker room? Well, I told the guys, you know, we've got to play one play at a time offensively and uh, stop shooting ourselves in the foot, and that's what we did on that drive. And I told them, look, we score here. We get the ball coming out, we score. It's a whole different ball game. We're going to win the game. They're not going to score another point on us. They can't drive the field. If we don't give them another short field, we're going to win the game. And so I said, but you have to believe that, and we have to finish because we haven't been finishing. And the penalties that you saw in the first half, Bulldogs were penalized nine times in the first half. How do you get that penalty banded off your back? Uh, well, like, we got a lot of young guys. And, uh, you know, we're working on those guys to, listen, you got to grow up. You mm. know, it's game five. Now it's going to be game six. We got to quit all this in their face and all these stupid penalties uh, that can cost us ball games. And uh, I think we're finally starting to learn. Uh, hopefully uh, uh, we won't have that problem again. And we'll take a look at the second half highlights of the Bulldog victory at Jackson State this Saturday night in Jackson, Mississippi on the Alabama A&M Football Review. Hello, I'm Pastor Troy. The game of football is a lot like the game of life. You have to tackle your problems and block your fears. I just want you to know there is victory in Jesus. I want to invite you to worship with us at one of our anointed services at our Huntsville campus or our Madison campus. At the Fellowship of Faith, Jesus is exalted and the word is explained. We love Alabama A&M. Go Bulldogs! <laughs> Engineering and science usually look like this, but our students build race cars from the ground up, explore wind tunnels, particle accelerators, and crystal growth. Our studies in cybersecurity and rocket propulsion have tech companies like Google and SpaceX recruiting at Alabama A&M University with one of the highest percentages of women STEM graduates in the country. Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. 90.9 WJAB FM Huntsville 100,000 watts 24 hours a day Smooth jazz and cool vocals and the home of mellow madness till midnight You bring me joy 90.9 WJAB from the campus of Alabama A&M University Companies hunger for our food scientists. Here, a new generation manages our cities of tomorrow. The discovery of hardier plants, healthier animals, is growing at our research station. Alabama A&M University, where new designs and ideas are put to the test. Be a researcher in our labs, or a forestry fire dog in our fields. Alabama A&M University. Start here, go anywhere.
Welcome back to the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. I'm Ted Dixie. Love talking about another Bulldogs victory coach, 21 to 16 over Jackson State, but it's 16 to 7 at the half. You got some wood to chop. Yeah, we we right back in it. You know, um, uh, that was a big score before the half, and now we got the ball coming out, and so uh, we can get a score here. We right back in the game. We got the momentum. We right where we want to be. So uh, it's. Uh, it, it, that was huge to get that score before the half. We were marking on the broadcast, Coach, that sometimes you just need one play to start the avalanche of good luck for a team. We have Ryan Jenkins Jr. trying to make plays in the special teams. You've got Trayvon Walters making plays now on offense, and you're waiting for one of your defensive players to come through and keep the shutout going that you got in the second half. Yeah, well, you know, the defense, they, they was balling. They, you know, they're getting sacks. They're getting breakups. Uh, they was making plays. And so they were fine. We just need them to continue to do what they was doing, not get those guys a short field again. Um, and then offensively, Trayvon's running the ball so hard, you know, just giving everybody energy. Uh, Brian is running, playing hard uh, as he can. Akil's making good throws. And now we go to the second half highlights. Here, Coach is a walk-on student athlete that gets time on the field. Yeah, you know, I, I tell everybody all the time, it don't matter if you're a walk-on, you're a freshman, you're a senior. We're going to play the best guys. We're going to play the people that's making plays. That was Mr. Gardner from Birmingham, Alabama, a product of Ramsey High School. Here we see another good job of punting, even though we had special teams errors in the beginning of the game, Coach. You still got to play who you got and keep their confidence. Yeah, we, uh, we got bottled down there, but, you know, what we did was we changed the field position so we knew defense is playing well. We can get a three and out right here, put us right back in good field position with, after a punt. So uh, it was huge for us to get, get a little momentum going there before the quick punt, and as you can see, uh, he overshot uh, Glass there, but we got the pass interference call. And we're waiting Here's for Here's the reverse. And there's not a soul over there. We don't have anybody to block. Good look at it. Look at it. They didn't have nobody to block. <laughs> Good not job. a shot. So that was a big play right there to, to uh, cut it to uh, 15 to 16. And then Spencer Corey with an extra point, and the Bulldogs now are going to go up 17 to 16. Now you can exhale, huh, Coach? No, we're not up yet. No, this didn't put us up. This was, uh, we were still down. This was our 16, second score. 14. It yeah. would have been my mistake, 16-14. Yeah. 16-14, but we're right where we want to be. We got all the momentum. It's early in the third quarter. We're doing exactly what we said we was going to do. Now we continue to stop these guys. You see the defense is flying around. They got energy. They got new life. And, uh, and the offense is upbeat. Jackson State even changed quarterbacks on this series, probably on the next one when we see they have the football. Yeah, you know, they, they, they sensed that the offense wasn't doing anything. You know, besides those short fields that we gave them, uh, they, they wasn't doing a thing. So uh, they say, you know what, let's try to get us a spark and, and change quarterbacks. That's a big shot to our defensive coordinator, Mark DeBastiani. Amar Armani Holloway, number 20, had four solo tackles, 11 assisted for 15, half tackle for loss, one fumble recovery. Right now, he's the second leading tackler in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Yeah, he's playing great, man. He's playing great. He's only a, a, a sophomore. Like I say, we're so young, and those guys are playing so hard. Um, you know, we got a big upside. These guys keep playing. Here's a big play right here, the biggest play in the game, uh, the in interception here. Um, the reason the play is so big because of the field position. Mm. If we don't intercept that ball, they punt us back, and we're probably starting from the 10 or the 5. But instead, we're starting from the 35 with the interception. So, it was, um, that was a huge, huge play in the football game. Adrian Portlock with that interception. Desmond Fletcher had another interception. Bulldogs had two on the day. Yep, that's, that was huge. Uh, and for the defense to get that turnover at that point in the game. And here's Walters again. Um, just power running, man. He, 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 was, uh, he was persistent. And this it's, play right here, Coach. It's a big play right here. It's, we basically did the same thing they did and just dropped the football going in uh, as they did the, the possession before, but we was able to recover it. And that's a good break and up here. And here's just, this is all 26 right here, Walters. Uh, made 13, missed four yards in the backfield. And uh, he just, he just wanted to, we just wanted a little more than they did, I believe. And then the Bulldogs now with the extra point go up 21 to 16. Here again, coach, breaking tackles and getting to the end zone. Yeah, it's 21 straight unanswered points, man. Uh, heart, heart of a champion there. The guys never quit. They believe, uh, as I was telling them since the second quarter, man, um, we can do it. They're not going to score again, but you got to believe and play one play at a time. And that's what those guys did, man. So I'm just so proud of those guys that they never gave up. They never pointed their fingers. They never got their heads down. They just kept playing, man, and they finished. Coach, where does your confidence come from in your team like that? 
Well, you gotta have it. If you don't believe, nobody will. If you don't believe you can do it, who gonna believe you can do it? You know, if you don't believe you can be a doctor, you can't be a doctor. If you don't believe you can be a lawyer, you can't be a lawyer. If you don't believe you can be a champion, you can't be a champion. So you have to believe it. And of course, Jackson State, as the lights come on in the stadium at Veterans Memorial in Jackson, Jackson trying to get back, trying to get the lead. At the end of the ball game, Coach, we might have gotten a little bit nervous. Jackson State kept getting opportunities to keep the drive alive. Yeah, you know, that interception was big there. and then, uh, But defense came with another stop, and here's our little wrinkle with our little wildcat package. Um, but now we're back traditional, and, and Walter's just running hard, man. Look at the kill glass, get down there, get a block. That was the amazing part, Coach, your quarterback block. Yeah, I mean, that just shows you how much everybody wants to win and they're going to do all they can. Um, he's downfield, uh, six, seven yards blocking for the running back. I thought that was Akil's best throw of the day, Coach. It was a great line. throw. We had to play there, a little double move, uh, but they, they rolled the coverage. And so he just came back to a check down. That was a great uh, play by the quarterback there. And fine reaction again by the Bulldog defense. As yeah. we mentioned earlier, you see a lot of white helmets. That's a trademark of the defense this year. Yes, sir. We, we got some speed there, and those guys are flying around, making plays. Even if one guy missed, we got two or three other guys right there, so um, game tackling. We saw you come talk to number 17, Eli Tamarki, coach, in one play in the ball game after you'd lost containment on the quarterback. What do you usually say to your student athletes if you say something in the middle of the game? Uh, whatever they messed up on. <laughs> And uh, it was, uh, he missed the tackle on the quarterback on that run that he got the, got the first down. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a quarterback, man. Kiss him in the mouth. You know, <laughs> you got to make that tackle. So, that, you know, that's the kind of stuff you talk to him about. Right here, we shouldn't have caught that ball. Um, you know, you got to knock that ball down. That's what you're coaching in on the end of the ball game. Yeah, you got you always coach him, man. You know, we don't want to intercept that ball right there. We want to knock that ball down. He intercepts that ball, and then they strip him. They got the ball first and goal. You know, so we, it's a learning process. We got a young football team, and it's always teachable and learnable moments, and uh, that's one. And we'll take that one as the Bulldogs come out on top, 21-16 to 16 against Jackson State. Now we're back on top as the recent rivalry shows. Coach, this week you get a chance to go to Houston, Texas. Fourth game in a row on the road for the Bulldogs to face Texas Southern. How are you thinking about that right now? Uh, it's the biggest game of the season. You know, yeah. another road game. Um, and so it's going to be tough. You know, it's going to be tough, uh, but we'll be ready. We're not ready yet. We got to we got to get practice. We got to get our game plans in. Uh, we got to watch this tape and get those these this, these mistakes corrected, and uh, then get ready for Texas Southern. So probably about three thirty, well, we'll start working on Texas Southern. Um, and so we got to be in another hostile environment on the road and looking for our second straight road victory and second straight conference victory. You're back on the winning side of the ledger, Coach, and we come back, we'll talk about more about Texas Southern. Kickoff is scheduled for 6 o'clock p.m. That means you can hear the pregame show at 5.30 p.m. on 90.9 FM, WJAB. Thank you for watching the Alabama A&M Football Review. Hello, I'm Fester Troy. The game of football is a lot like the game of life. You have to tackle your problems and block your fears. I just want you to know there is victory in Jesus. I want to invite you to worship with us at one of our anointed services at our Huntsville campus or our Madison campus. At the Fellowship of Faith, Jesus is exalted and the word is explained. We love Alabama A&M. Go Bulldogs! <laughs> Ninety point nine WJAB FM Huntsville. One hundred thousand watts, twenty four hours a day. Smooth jazz and cool vocals, and the home of mellow madness till midnight. Ninety point nine WJAB from the campus of Alabama A and M University. Engineering and science usually look like this, but our students build race cars from the ground up, explore wind tunnels, particle accelerators, and crystal growth. 
Our studies in cybersecurity and rocket propulsion have tech companies like Google and SpaceX recruiting at Alabama A&M University with one of the highest percentages of women STEM graduates in the country. Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. Thank you for watching the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. I'm Ted Dixie. If you want to talk to Coach Maynard, please join us Monday nights at 6 o'clock p.m. at Applebee's on North Memorial Parkway for Bulldog Talk. Coach Maynard, quite available. You entertain, meet folks. Coach, you're a pretty affable person. What have you liked most about Bulldog fans so far? Uh, everything, man. They show up and show out. You know, not only do they come to the games and they, and they pack, uh, they're loud. They, they understand the game of football situation. And when we need them up in the third quarter or third downs, they're making a lot of noise. And uh, they're there with their maroon and white on uh, every week, man. And, and it's and so much, it means so much to the players, uh, for mm -hmm. the fans to be there and, and to make noise and support those guys. And so uh, Bulldog fans keep supporting. Uh, the guys uh, know you there, and it means a lot. Last road game in a series of four here at Texas Southern. This Saturday evening kickoff is scheduled for 6 o'clock p.m. But let's put a programming note in your ear. October 13th, it's homecoming on the hill. Alcorn State comes to campus, folks. We need you in the stands, your feet on the concrete, and your face in the place. For ticket information, you may dial 256-372-4700. What's on your mind about Texas Southern, Coach? What did they do well that you've seen so far? Well, I, to be honest with you, I haven't had a chance to see the tape um, because of the travel that mm -hmm. we've been doing. And, you know, we take them one at a time, you know. Last week's game was the biggest game of the season, so we don't we don't want to jump ahead. We respect all and fear none. Uh, so right after this, uh, I'll be headed to watch some Texas Southern, and and then we start mounting our game plans and uh, get them to the players and and go from there. But you know, we, we what we have to do is we have to take care of Bulldog football. Uh, defensively, we got to keep doing what we're doing defensively, flying around, um, game tackling, getting pressure on the quarterback. Uh, getting turnovers, we've been we've been getting two, three, four turnovers the past couple mm -hmm. games. If we continue to do that on defense, then we got to clean up our special teams. Um, the past two weeks, special teams uh, have let us down a little bit, so we got to get that cleaned up. And then offensively, we just got to take care of the football. Uh, we can't have two turnovers. Of course, one was on on downs, mm -hmm. um, but we take care of the football. Don't give the other team short fields. We're gonna be fine. We're gonna be fine. So. Um, not, not to say we disrespect and take a southern, but we have to take care of ourselves. And we take care of ourselves, we'll be fine. We have a chance to win every football game that we play from here on out. Thank you for watching this week's edition of the Alabama A&M Football Review. Hopefully join us next week when we'll talk about another Bulldogs victory.